and welcome to Take 10. I'm Jennifer Johnson. With us in the studio today is Mr. Luis Baranda. Mr. Baranda is the President and CEO of U.S. Hispanic Youth Entrepreneur Education. Thanks for being with us today. That's a mouthful. That is it? a mouthful. So tell our audience, please, what is U.S. Hispanic Youth Entrepreneur Education? What is it? What well, are you guys? The, uh, first of all, uh, it, the acronym is UCHI, so that'll help us <laughs> get through that <laughs> right. a little bit. But uh, U.S. Hispanic Youth Entrepreneur Education focuses on the high school to college continuum for Latino youth. Uh, as you know, uh, nationally, our young people are dropping out of high school at, uh, at a rate of higher than 50%. Here in Maryland, we're doing a lot better. But um, needless to say, with uh, the uh, Hispanic demographic being not only the largest, but the youngest as well, we really need to focus on our kids uh, graduating from high school and going on to college. Why was this started? You said it started in, nine, in 2005, is that correct? Yeah, we, we started... Did you just watch this national trend getting worse and worse and worse, and was that the motivating factor? Well, the interesting thing was is that uh, in that time period, uh, I actually sat on the Baltimore County School Board, hmm. and uh, we did a stint um, uh, serving with the state of Maryland. I was the Deputy Secretary of State. So there are a lot of... Uh, 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 circumstances and situations that uh, allowed me to have an insight uh, in in terms of how our kids were doing. Uh, this, the the uh, 2004 census numbers came out indicating that our that our community was the largest minority uh, in the United States, and we really began to focus on how our kids were doing. And honestly, I was shocked um, to discover that 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 our kids were dropping out at such high rates, and so. Uh, myself and uh, several other uh, folks got together. We decided that we needed to do something. And so we created Yushi. Uh, the chairman of our board is a gentleman by the name of Roger Campos, who's uh, the chairman of the Minority Business Roundtable. Okay. So understanding that um, small businesses are the largest employers in the United States, and being an entrepreneur myself, having the background in education, we thought that there might be a way to, to, to marry both education and entrepreneurship. And so the, the idea continued to percolate and germinate. And uh, in 2005, we approached the Hispanic College Fund to uh, bring a program that they had at uh, uh, Marymount University in Arlington, Virginia, to the state of Maryland and that program was a Hispanic Youth Symposium. In 2005, we uh, began the symposium at UMBC uh, under the, um, really the support uh, of Dr. Grasmick and uh, the president of UMBC, Dr. Rabowski. Th those two folks were instrumental in bringing the symposium to the state Dr. of Maryland. Dr. Grasmick being the state school superintendent. Correct. I'm not familiar with that. So what specifically does your organization do to make sure these children stay in high school mm -hmm. and hopefully move on to college? What do you specifically do with them? Well, there are several things that we, that we do. The first is that we create, we bring them to a college campus which begins to inoculate our youth uh, with, an, with an idea that they belong on a college campus. Right. Uh, so we, we put them in a college seat, they eat college food, and it's not all that bad anymore. Right. <laughs> Actually, it's quite good. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we, we begin to uh, uh, run them through workshops that include what they need to do in order to prepare for college. Uh, we help them understand what uh, things like a FAFSA is. Uh, we help them understand um, uh, how to uh, uh, write. Uh, we, have sp we have speech competitions. We have essay competitions. We have uh, art competitions. So we begin to kind of give them the soft skills mm -hmm. that, that they need. Um, and then we also pair them up with uh, folks that can begin to mentor them uh, a little bit through uh, the Hispanic Hero um, workshop that we have. We bring uh, business leaders and community leaders from all over the state of Maryland to have basically one-on-ones with these kids. And it's not quite one-on-ones, but, but it is uh, a setting where uh, I might be sitting with you know two or three students that um, allows them to ask me questions. Is this a voluntary thing for the kids? Do they have to sign up for it? Or how do, you, how do you get them to do it? How do you get the parents involved and the 
you know, the kids involved. If, yeah. if they're thinking, I just want to drop out anyway, Luis, I don't want to be here. No, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you, it, it's a challenge. It's a, it definitely is a labor of love because kids can be doing a million things. And to uh, come to a college campus for four days and three nights to the Hispanic Youth Symposium or to our Achieve program, which is on a Saturday, uh, kids really have to um, be somewhat self-motivated mm -hmm. and um, have, a, have a desire to succeed. And we, we know that our, uh, in the Latino community, especially in our first generation, the parents have come here for a better life for their kids. Yeah. And um, I think the kids understand that. And so they are really grabbing a hold of different things, uh, different tools to help them. And the uh, Achieve Forum and the Hispanic Youth Symposium are two tools that they can, that they can grab a hold of. Our outreach efforts are grassroots. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we go into ch schools, we go into churches, um, we, we talk to people uh, just the way that we might talk to neighbors. It's just letting them know, letting parents know that this uh, tool is available for them to use. Right, because it's important to, as you know, just to start talking to these kids long before they're in high school and talking to their parents. Because yeah. by the time they get into high school, it's getting tougher and tougher and they're watching kids, their friends, their peers drop out and then you know, you're, you're going to lose a lot of them. That, that and that is true. Uh, Baltimore City Public Schools actually asked us to to, to begin to reach out in in the middle school. Uh, we're a very new organization, so we can't be all things to all people. Right. But what we can do, we 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 think that we do a, a really good job at. Uh, so um, we, we're targeting uh, ninth, tenth, and eleventh graders. Seniors are welcome too, right. uh, but we do target ninth, tenth, and eleventh graders. I know you have one of these college symposiums coming up June seventeenth through the twentieth. Correct at Towson how, University. How do kids or parents get information about that? You have a website, I assume. Yeah, they can Maybe go to his, his, they can yes. go to hispanicyouth.org okay. to uh, hispanicyouth.org uh, to review um, what they need to do for next year. Okay. Unfortunately this year it's uh, the registration has closed um, and we'll be serving about a hundred students from Montgomery County uh, this year at the symposium and it, it, it probably comes as no surprise uh, to anyone in your viewing audience that many of our students um, if not the majority of our students do come from uh, Montgomery uh, County uh, public schools as well as uh, some of the other large jurisdictions with high concentrations of Hispanics. What's the primary reason when you talk about these kids dropping out of high school and unfortunately never ending up in college, what, mm -hmm. what have you found to be the primary reason for that? There are, there are a lot of, of, of reasons. Uh, economic is one of the predominant reasons. Uh, parents are working two and three jobs and many times uh, they'll create small businesses and their children are helping them. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it becomes sometimes an economic necessity for the kids to drop out. Um, there are uh, obviously language barriers uh, that come into play. It's very, very frustrating to come to this country, for example, in, in, as, as a mid-teen and try to learn a second right. language. It's very difficult. But you know, some of our kids are doing a great job at doing just that. They come in understanding, probably leaving in many cases, in fact, one particular case, a uh, young lady uh, here in Montgomery County uh, left her uh, family uh, in her home country, came here to the United States uh, as a 15 year old, learned the language, and do you know she's got a 3.85 GPA and uh, she'll be attending college um, uh, this, this coming fall. That's great. So we have those little success stories. I know you've enlisted and we're running out of time, but Alyssa, several colleges in the area, you're yeah. expanding hopefully eventually into Montgomery Community College. Yes. Uh, we're, we're, we, we'd love to come to Montgomery College uh, in 2010-2011 in uh, to expose the kids to uh, the Achieve Forum. And uh, again, that is a Saturday program that we run 12 times a year. And uh, at that Saturday program, uh, we not only engage uh, the youth, but we have a track for their parents. Uh, we also have another track for community leaders and educators. Right. Uh, community leaders and educators need to know who we are. 
Um, sometimes people don't understand who this Hispanic right. market is. All right. Well, they'll check out your website. That's great information. Good luck with your program. Uh, thank you very thank much you for, for the opportunity nice. to come and share with the audience. Thank you. And thank you for giving us a few minutes of your time. Remember to visit us on the web at the link on your screen. I'm Jennifer Johnson. Join us next time here on Take 10. Thank you.